Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Coming up in the next half hour, a forum offering seniors in diverse communities some well-needed resources for their well-being. We have a full report. Plus, we get an update about a new library and other cool programs for you and your kids to check out this summer. And later, taking it to the streets, the free outdoor art gallery that will take over Rockville Town Square. But first, how to improve transparency when there's an officer-involved death. This week, the Council's Public Safety Committee met to discuss a bill that would address that very issue. As Susan Kennedy reports, much of the discussion focused on who should take the lead when these incidents occur. Until there's a public accounting of what happens in the case of a police-involved death, there will always be doubt and there will always be distrust. The bill would require an independent investigation of an officer-involved death by at least two investigators with experience in conducting complex criminal inquiries. Those investigators must be employed by a local, state, or federal law enforcement agency located outside of Montgomery County. We need to say the strong voice that independent police investigations and independent prosecutions are a priority for us. Justice for Robert White! Justice for Robert White! The impetus for the Law Enforcement Trust and Transparency Bill comes after the death of Silver Spring resident Robert White, who was shot dead by a county police officer last June. The investigation into White's death was conducted by county police officers and then forwarded to the Howard County State's Attorney, who decided not to press charges. Montgomery County Police Chief Tom Manger says he is in favor of an independent investigation, but has some concerns about oversight and some of the bill's legalities. We, none of us, and I, I think that Mr. Juwanda would agree with me, none of us want a deficient investigation, something less than what we get now. Uh, we want the best investigation that can be done. Um, and uh, so if we, what I, my intent is try and get us there um, and give this, uh, the, the investigation itself, as much independent review, as much independence and uh, oversight um, as we can possibly get without um, diminishing the, uh, the, the uh, effectiveness and the professionalism and the accuracy of the investigation itself. Councilmember Jawando says overall, the county police department conducts itself with professionalism. Montgomery County has a great police department. Our police officers are professional, they're dedicated and highly trained. But the limited information during the Robert White investigation left many unanswered questions. And Montgomery County leads uh, in a lot of areas. We've done it in other legislation that years later is adopted by the state or considered by the state. Um, and it's important to point out that all of the logistical issues that were mentioned by the chief uh, would be in place even if you had a statewide entity doing it, figuring out who deploys to the scene, who's responsible for what, who's the lead investigator. All those things are issues that we're going to have to, would have to be figured out in any scenario, whether it's a state or a county to county. And so I think we need to move forward. It puts us in a little bit of a, of a concern. There is a concern that in Montgomery County, that since we're dealing with asking an outside agency, Montgomery County doesn't have the authority to say, other county, please help us out. We'll help you out. You help us out. So that's another concern. And then there's, you know, there's budgetary and all those, all those things that need to be worked out. Currently, Illinois, Utah, and Wisconsin require outside investigations in cases involving the use of force by an officer. The council's public safety committee will continue with its discussion on the bill before it's brought before the council. So I'm hopeful that. Again, that independence and transparency will lead to more citizen involvement, and we can find more formal ways to get them involved down the line. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. The recent terror attacks at two mosques in Christchurch claim the lives of 50 innocent people. The horrific massacres have reverberations around the world. That includes right here in Montgomery County. My MC Media's Jordan Lindsay spoke with officials at the Islamic Community Center of Potomac for a local reaction. As you can imagine, um, we woke up to horrific news on our holy day and um, there was a palpable vulnerability in the air, whether spoken or not. Um, there was a profound sense of grief within our community and within the community around us. We had lots of people from different faith groups, from the church, from the synagogue, from 
um, the temple and just neighbors come out in droves to show support and solidarity. So um, we have a tradition in our faith. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that um, the community of believers is like a body, one body. So when one limb aches, the entire body aches. And I think we, we saw that manifest that day. Um, it was a real show of empathy within the greater community. So with every tragedy, there's a ray of hope. And I think the outpouring of love and support from the community at large was that ray of hope. We were really fortunate and very overwhelmed with gratitude that the police commissioner of uh, Montgomery County came to offer you know, more police security. And so we had more security last Friday. And um, whether or not we like it, that's a reality today, that we're going to feel better that, that there is security, that there's armed people outside. And um, we're, we're very grateful for, for the security that they showed and, um, and the solidarity of the community that showed up to help as well. We have to keep in mind that the majority of people are not haters. We've seen very clearly in the aftermath of this attack that that's true. People are coming together as one, lifting one another up and standing side by side every color, religion, race, out of love and a message of peace, which is fitting as Islam means peace. Local seniors looking for local resources were pointed in the right direction during a recent forum. MyMC Media's Jordan Lindsay has more details on how it focused on older adults in racial, ethnic and LGBTQ communities. Montgomery County is known for celebrating its diversity, including the senior citizen population. We've pulled together different organizations and government agencies that work with older adults in these various areas. Like I told you, LG, LGBTQ, um, all of the ethnic areas, you know, this is a very diverse community. The Montgomery County Commission on Aging held a public forum on Tuesday to bring awareness to the challenges faced by older adults who identify with various communities. Some people forget when they're doing their planning to look and include what do older adults need. As you can see, there are several vending tables offering a variety of resources for the local diverse community. Well, some of the vendors are uh, organizations such as the Area Agency on Aging, you've got Medicare, you've got, I think, uh, AARP, um, you've got some uh, local churches. To me, I wanted to come and be educated about how much the Commission on Aging in Montgomery County is doing towards supporting underserved communities in its county. Potomac resident Edgar Rivas attended the public forum, mainly because of the resources that he might personally find helpful. And I was very impressed that it wasn't just people of color we were talking about, but we were talking about gender issues and sexual preference issues and things like that. The fact that elders who have lived basically in the closet, especially the older generation in their 80s, it's a very changing time, and there are a lot of issues that have to be addressed for them. The ultimate goal, officials say, is to help residents thrive at any age. Reporting in Silver Spring, Jordan Lindsay for County Report This Week. Coming up on County Report This Week, Wheaton gets ready to open a new library. We'll get an update on when and the exciting programs being offered. And a NASA astronaut teaching local students the power of water during a lesson they won't soon forget. Those stories and more when we come back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. 
For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Did you know that there is a new library opening in the county? This week on the County Spanish Language Radio Show, we heard more about the new Wheaton Library. It will open later this summer, but that's not all. There are some exciting services being offered, such as summer reading programs, new music and movie streaming services, and job assistance with the 2020 Census. Public libraries in Montgomery County are working with the Census Bureau to provide sessions that will give um, community residents information on jobs with the census, the 2020 census. And they'll be um, throughout the county about one a month from now until basically into November. So if anyone is interested in, in employment with the census, they can call their local library, find out when the next opportunity is, and come on by. For more info, visit your local branch or go online to montgomerycountymd.gov slash library. You can also watch this entire show on the county's YouTube channel. Do you need help to better manage your finances? If so, the county's public libraries are here to assist during March and April. MCPL will offer free educational seminars on money management. It's part of Money Smart Week. This is a national public awareness campaign, which includes libraries helping to inform consumers about financial literacy. The dates are fast approaching, so visit MCPL's website for a complete list of those programs and the dates they will be held. In Burtonsville, the Maryland J. Praisner Library will close on Saturday, April 13th at 6 p.m. It will remain closed for up to six months for renovations. And the refresh projects for the libraries bring in things like a rearrangement of the interior space, new paint, new carpet, new furniture, a better use of the space, generally some upgrades of network cabling, electrical. So all of those things will be happening at the Prisoner Library. While the library is closed, there still will be some services there in Burtonsville at the uh, community center, which is just across the parking lot. We're going to have some of our programs in there and there will also be a book return where people can bring their materials and a locker where they can pick up their holds. And of course, the library is not too far from White Oak, so the staff at White Oak is excited and happy to welcome the residents of the Fairland Burtonsville area down to White Oak and help them out there and assist them. Customers are reminded that during the closure, they can use other nearby branches. Branch hours and locations can be found at montgomerycountymd.gov slash library. Helping someone who is homeless get the services they need is now just a phone call away. The county's Department of Health and Human Services has partnered with Every Mind. They've launched a 24-7 homeless information line. Trained specialists with information about services and shelters are ready to take your call. Callers can give the location of homeless individuals. Then they'll try to be located so support and resources can be offered. The number is 240-907 2688. For more information, visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash homelessness. For local families and patients dealing with serious illness, there's an event coming up to spotlight palliative care in the county. A panel of experts will take part in a free Health Care Decisions Day program. It'll be held on April 16th from 8.30 to 11 a.m. at the Silver Spring Civic Building. This event is called Beyond Hospice, Palliative Care in Montgomery County. A number of topics will be discussed, including what services are available here in the county and the challenges faced in providing vital resources to patients and families. For more info about the event and where to register, go to mccelc.org. What do you get when you mix together H2O with a NASA astronaut and MCPS students? You get a celebration of World Water Day. MCPS TV has the story. What are some things on this spaceship 
that, that you have to have in order to survive? Water. Food. As part of the World Water Day, students from Glen Allen Elementary School were treated to a special presentation by astronaut Ricky Arnold, who talked about the importance of water while being in space. Any water we take to space, water's heavy. You ever carried a bucket of water around? It's heavy. And it's expensive to launch. So when we go to space, we want to reuse water as much as we can. Astronaut Arnold, who recently returned from six months aboard the International Space Station, shared stories about his mission, talked about careers in STEM, and compared living on a spaceship to planet Earth. We are on a spaceship here, and we have everything we need to survive, but there's only so much of it. So we need to make sure that we're good stewards of the things we have here that, that make life possible on Earth. Life requires water. Students then traveled by foot to close by Brookside Gardens, where they engaged with 18 hands-on teaching stations about water. The stations were run by experts and scientists from NASA, Maryland's Department of Natural Resources, Maryland Parks, and other environmental groups. They're exploring how uh, water is a very important natural resource, how we have a limited amount of water on our planet, um, how they can do uh, things to help water pollution, erosion, um, how we run through the water cycle. They're studying clouds and water formation. We're learning that bugs and insects need wa clean water to survive. We're learning about migration and like birds, how they have to go to different places to get like food and different places to stay warm. I'm, when I go home, I'm going to tell my parents that like they need to keep the water clean and they need to keep the air clean for the birds. From learning about erosion and how to stop it, this is cool because we get, I get to learn all this stuff that I didn't know before. The end goal is to show students how important water is as a natural resource and that we have um, a lot to do to protect water on our planet. Coming up on County Report this week, helping immigrant young people gain access to higher education. We have a report about the valuable information shared at this summit. And why these county police officers were honored for going above and beyond the call of duty. Find out what they did for two local schools. Stay with us. County Report this week will be right back. Down here. You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Undocumented youth have gained more access to higher education. Carolina Galliano tells us how local colleges and universities are working together to get the word out on how these students can get in. Many undocumented students lack the information they need to pursue an affordable college education. But one thing is certain. The resources exist and they were shared here today at the Educators and Immigrant Youth Summit. So the Cross Campus Organizing Network started um, once the administration changed and we sort of saw that a lot of students around campuses felt like they were being pointed out and they were they sort of were frightened to the idea that a lot of these people felt the need to attack them. And then we noticed that there was a lack of um, sort of coordination and partnership among all of our institutions. So that's why we decided to create this um, summit, that this is our second summit. We went for 75 to 160 people, and it's just so that we can educate people, so that they can take action. Because at the end of the day, in order to take action, you need to be educated. And not only educate professors and students, but parents and staff and administrators. A lot of students and families don't know that these opportunities are out there, so we want them to learn how to access this information, 
um, and you know, to see if they're eligible to get these discounts for in-county or in-state tuition. Although Maryland's undocumented students cannot apply to FAFSA, they are now eligible to apply to the Maryland State Financial Aid Application through the Maryland Higher Education Commission. Something that has personally changed my life is the Dream That U.S. Scholarship. Uh, it has opened doors. Uh, it has given me the opportunity to continue to access higher education. Uh, and so I also encourage uh, DMB students to and uh, MC students to, to apply and see uh, how they can go to local schools. For County Report this week, in Silver Spring, I'm Carolina Galeano. A group of Montgomery County police officers were honored for their dedication in building trust with two schools, Kemp Mill Elementary and Glen Haven Elementary. Because of their service, they were presented the Chief Bernard D. Crook Jr. Community Service Award. This all took place during the 45th Annual Public Safety Awards Luncheon. Police officers know there's more to police work than showing up at the scene of a crime, solving complicated cases, and writing traffic tickets. They know there's a community service element that's vital to fostering strong relationships. That is particularly true for a group of eight officers who made it their mission to bolster relationships with students and parents at Kemp Mill and Glen Haven Elementary Schools. Led by Sergeant Ijuma and Endu, the officers are Police Officer 3, Michelle Baller, Baller, sorry about that, Police Officer Casey Beck, Police Officer 2, Bradford, or Bradford Fox, Police Officer 2, Michael Joseph, Police Officer 2, Aaron McMullen, Police Officer 2, Eva Reyes, and Police Officer 1, Angela Ferrofino. From 2015 through 2018, these officers went above and beyond their normal patrol duties by adopting the two elementary schools, students where, or schools where students didn't particularly trust the police. The officers greet children with a fist bump in the morning, eat lunch with students, read books in classes, attending PTA meetings, and spent time with students after school. They help students to face issues like bullying and peer pressure. Officers coach sports events, including soccer and girls on the run. The officers also met with parents and teachers, much of the coaching and mentoring happening on the officers' own time. The results were clear. Relationships between students, parents, and police greatly improved. The Montgomery County Police Department believes the officers' initiatives and community engagement is above and beyond the call of duty. And the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce is honored to present the Chief Bernard D. Crook Jr. Community Service Award to Sergeant, I knew I was gonna have to do this again, Ijuma Enendo, Police Officer 3, Michelle Baller, Police Officer 2, Casey Beck, Police Officer 2, Bradford Fox, Police Officer 2, Michael Joseph, Police Officer 2, Aaron McMullen, and Police Officer 2, Ever Reyes. It's time to get plugged into the Montgomery County Energy Summit. For the past five years, this event has offered education and the latest trends in commercial energy efficiency and renewable energy. This year is no different, so come out to network with others in the industry. The summit takes place on April 3rd at 8 a.m. at the Silver Spring Civic Building. The theme this year is focused on the here and now. There will be a keynote presentation, education sessions, an expo, and a reception. For more info, go to mcenergysummit.org. Coming up on County Report this week, why go inside a gallery to see works of art when you can view them outdoors? That's the beauty of the Rockville Arts Festival, and we have all the info. Plus, spring is here, and that means beautiful flowers are starting to bloom at Brookside Gardens. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Interested in career success? Get to Montgomery College and we'll get you going. You can earn an associate's degree in only two years. With three campuses, award-winning faculty, and multiple online learning opportunities, Montgomery College will empower you to set your course and succeed. Want to pursue a bachelor's degree? If you start at MC, you can save a third on total tuition costs of a four-year program. Apply today.
Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Here's a cool, interesting way to see a free art gallery on the streets of Rockville. It's all part of the city's annual arts festival. Rock 11's Craig Buchanan tells us why this year stands out from the rest. If you're looking to shop for a unique gift or something for yourself, the 7th Annual Rockville Arts Festival returns on May 4th and 5th at Rockville Town Square. Visit and shop at the free two-day sidewalk sale that is an art lover's dream. Formerly known as ARTS at Rockville Town Square, this year will continue to see hundreds of vendors with items for sale. But there's plenty more to see beyond that. And what's different about this year's festival is that we're involving many of the city's cultural arts organizations. So some of them will be having performances here to showcase their work and to help them get the word out about what they're doing. This is the first year with VizArts at the helm and they're partnering with the city to reshape Town Square into an arts destination. We believe that focusing on art and arts activities is a way to make it different from some of the other urban centers that are around the area. We believe that there's an artist in everyone and that art is, you know, a, a great way of communicating and that the arts are essential to a, a vibrant community. The artists involved with this festival appreciate the personal connections they can make with the people passing through. The turnout is so impressive and the interest is so sincere and the result the people interacting with artists and buying art and taking it home says a lot. For more information about this year's festival, head to rockvilleartsfestival.org. For County Report This Week, I'm Craig Buchanan. Springtime is finally here, and at Brookside Gardens, that means some flowers are starting to bloom. We're told that although most of them haven't fully bloomed, the buds are surely peeking through. Sometimes they bloom as early as December when they get confused. Springtime is here and at Brookside Gardens, some flowers are starting to bloom. Really, really exciting. Things are really starting to pop. Uh, there's some color behind me already. Kelly Heim at Brookside says although most of them haven't fully bloomed, as you can see, the buds are peeking through. Some of the Prunus Mumes, the Japanese apricots look perfect today. Um, there's the Edgeworthia, the paper bush is also blooming. It smells like heaven. And the list goes on. Some of the early, early crocuses, the Tommies have just started and their carpets of purple. Um, the daffodils, the little tete-a-tetes are starting, um, and the snowdrops. There's also something else in store. They've planted 50,000 daffodils to celebrate their 50th anniversary. And they should be blooming within the next week, so there'll be sweeps and carpets of gold absolutely everywhere for our golden anniversary. We're really thrilled that we've been able to be open since 1969. Um, you can definitely tell that the guest relation um, to us and us to them is really important and their well-being, um, and we have a whole year planned of fun events. So, when should people start to see the flowers in full bloom? Usually by the first week of April, things are still really, really popping. Um, the tulips will probably be the second or third week, um, which is the big kickoff, and then it's, a, it's all out from there. It doesn't stop till October or November. Reporting in Wheaton, Jordan Lindsay for County Report This Week. Music lovers, take note. We have one of the best concert series to tell you about, and it's free. Montgomery County Recreation is hosting the Strathmore's Bloom 2019 Concert Series. It'll be held at the new Good Hope Neighborhood Recreation Center in Silver Spring. The concerts will take place on the second Saturday of every month. It'll run from April 13th through August 10th. The lineup of great performers is on your screen. For tickets and other info, go to strathmore.org slash bloom. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Thank you for watching.